what are the different types of scoliosis testing and screening. Many times when a patient is diagnosed with scoliosis, they may have been screened or tested several times for scoliosis before they actually were diagnosed. And a lot of patients don't understand why that is. Like why, why would they find it now and not find it earlier? Well, first of all, the reason why testing and screening is important for scoliosis is because we know one thing, is that we know scoliosis is progressive, that it's its nature to worsen over time. And even though early detection in scoliosis doesn't guarantee treatment results, but it does definitely increases the chance, meaning the sooner we find it and the smaller we find it, the more likely we are we are to get a positive outcome, especially when it comes to conservative treatment options. Now, when we look at scoliosis, what's the most prevalent type of scoliosis? We know scoliosis is most often diagnosed in adolescent cases, and the most common type is something called idiopathic scoliosis, where idiopathic means we don't know what's actually causing it. It means unknown cause. But that despite the cause, or whatever the cause may be, we believe the cause actually occurs in juvenile life, something in their juvenile years that causes a very small curve, and the curve progresses relatively slowly until puberty. And puberty for most adolescents is somewhere between 10 and 18 years of age. And as they go through puberty and as they start to grow rapidly, the growth is what causes this curve to progress. It's not initially what caused it. So since whatever that caused their scoliosis may be completely gone at that time, the body may have healed and recovered from that issue, but because they have a curve and they're growing, the curve has a chance to grow with them. How much a curve progresses during this stage of growth between 10 and 18 years of age is an unknown variable. Some curves only progress 10 or 15 degrees and they can become mild. Some progress you know, 25, 30 degrees and they become, they become moderate. Some 40 or 50, they become severe. Other cases can progress to 80 plus, 90, 100 degrees and they become very severe. The biggest curve I've ever seen in a grown child, unfortunately, has been 155 degrees. So curves can become very severe at this stage. Unfor and, and unfortunately, they also can progress very, very quickly. The fastest progression I've ever seen in the shortest window, I've seen curves progress over 20 degrees in less than four to five weeks. I've seen curves progress 60 degrees in, in six months. So curves can rapidly change in this stage. They can go from mild to very severe in a very short time, depending on how fast a person or the child is growing at this stage. Unfortunately, mild scoliosis, curves less than 25 degrees, can be very difficult to detect meaning that you may not see any outward symptoms and you may not see anything that may be occurring and the patient may not be experiencing any difficulty as the result of the scoliosis. And then when they go into this growth phase and they trigger this progression, a lot of patients and a lot of parents are shocked, like where did this thing come from? Well, more likely it was there, but they just weren't noticed. The, 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 the signs were too subtle. We know scoliosis in its earliest form, especially adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, the most common thing it first creates is a postural deviation, something wrong with their posture. So if you see posture problems in your child or if you see posture problems in, your, in yourself, don't take these things lightly, especially if they're pre-puberty, meaning if you see a you know, five or six or seven year old with uneven shoulders, uneven hips, uneven rib arch, head tilt, something that's saying, hey, this something is not symmetrical in their posture. These mild forms uh, of posture deviations may be very mild, may be very subtle, and could be discarded even by your pediatrician or by doctors saying, oh, don't worry about it, they're gonna grow out of it. These small posture problems could be a sign that there's scoliosis occurring, and uncorrected, they walk, they go into this growth phase you know, walking around with no pain, no difficulty, nothing, nothing like that they would feel in the adolescent form, they start to grow and boom, and these curves progress. And they're like, well, we saw these little signs earlier and we didn't do anything about it. And that's what tends to happen when they get this early testing done. They may see some signs, hey, there's some curves occurring there, they see some asymmetry, but in their mind or in their eye, that the, the doctor thinks that it's not big enough so they don't recommend any type of evaluation. And the, the, to compound this problem is that kids don't grow all at the same time. So, I mean, some kids go through growth spurts at 10, some at 11, some at 12, some at 13. In fact, you could walk into a doctor's office, have a very, have hardly no de posture deviation. You could walk out and they say, okay, there's no issue, don't worry about it. You could walk out of that doctor's office, your child can go through a growth spurt the very next day. The posture problem developed very quickly and normally you're not going back 
for another pediatric visit for another 12 months, a lot can happen in 12 months. So therefore, what we recommend is that you, you're proactive and you check your children's posture regularly, especially in this pre-puberty to puberty range. Now, why is being proactive regard, regarding idiopathic scoliosis, why is it so important? Because how fast it can progress and how bad things can become with scoliosis. And the end stage when it comes to scoliosis progression and severity, it's a very invasive treatment, meaning you're looking at scoliosis surgery infusion that where you put rods and screws in your spine that are with you for the rest of your life. So being proactive and looking at curves when they're small and treating them when they're small, we can lead to a much greater outcome where you're avoiding this type of invasive treatment as a result of the progressive nature of scoliosis. So where we find scoliosis isn't always indicative of where it's gonna say. We know most curves will progress and most likely they're gonna progress rapidly during growth phase, even though they still progress in the adult form, but they progress much, much slower, slower. So proactive treatment can impress this, can really increase the, the likelihood of the condition becoming severe, worsening symptoms, and the need for invasive surgical treatment in the future. So how does early detection actually increase this chance? Well, first of all, we know smaller curves, younger patients are much easier to treat than bigger curves, older patients. So the smaller and the, the smaller the curve, the younger the patient, the better. And the reason why smaller curves tend to be much more flexible, meaning they're much easier to reduce because they're not as stiff. Smaller curves also are catching it prior to progression and growth. So the straighter we can make their spine while they, great, while they grow with a straighter spine, they actually, we can use the growth to help us correct their spine. The body's also more responsive to treatment because it, it, as it's growing and developing, we can alter the abnormal development by the abnormal growth cycle leading to abnormal progression of scoliosis because growth causes the progression of the scoliosis and the bigger the curve becomes, the more abnormal the growth becomes and these abnormal development of the growth of the bones leads to more scoliosis and they kind of feed each other. Well, if we can alter that and we can interrupt that, reduce the curve size, we can now alter the way the abnormal growth is occurring and lead to more symmetrical growth. So what's the most common type of scoliosis screening? Well, the most common one is Adam's forward bending. This is where they have patients bend forward and they look at the, the patients bending forward and they look at their rib arches. And they're classically looking for a thoracic scoliosis. The problem with most of these screening tests that are done in public, meaning like in schools or done in like, um, in, in, and they're doing like, a, like a, in fifth grade or sixth grade, they're testing all the kids at the same time. Like I said, kids go through growth at different stages. So if that one child has gone through puberty already and they've gone through some growth, they may have developed a big enough curve that they can see it, let's say a fifth or sixth grade. But let's say this person is not gonna go through growth phase until they're like in seventh or eighth grade. Well, they check them, they see nothing and they don't check them again. Well, they could go through growth later and the scoliosis actually never gets diagnosed because it never becomes big enough. Adam's forward bending test is only really effective of finding a thoracic scoliosis. And normally in order to see a rib deviation, the curve's gotta be 20, 25 degrees or greater. If you got a 10 or 15 degree curve in there, it's very difficult to see. And normally it's easier to see in a C-shaped curve than it is in an S-shaped curve. So even an S-shaped curve that's very symmetrical, you may not see enough bending. And it also depends on body type, meaning if the patient's really thin, this test could maybe be more effective because you can see ribs. But if the patient's a little bit bigger, you know, whether the body type isn't super thin, it may be harder to find. A lot of times the Adams forward for bending test is combined with a scoli meter. A scoli meter is like a level that actually looks at the ribs and look at the level of the spine, which helps it be more accurate. Meaning if you find a scoli meter tilt of greater of five to seven degrees, they say that's a positive indication of a, there being a scoliosis and that recommends it. But bending forward is only one parameter of posture. And what's missed is they don't look at shoulder balance, they don't look at waist, they don't look at the, hem at the hemithorax to see the alignment of the ribs in standing. They don't look at the scapular winging. They don't look at the space between the arms. They don't look at uh, uh, pelvic balance and pelvic height. And all these things in, in addition will help you determine. A lot of these times, these things are just skipped. They just had the patient bend forward, look at it. They, they don't see anything wrong bending. They send them on their way. And again, you gotta have a significant curve in order for that to be found. In fact, 
if I, there's debate in terms of what's the actual average size of diagnosis, but the average size is not like 10 or 15 degrees. The average size of the initial diagnosis is more in the 25 to 35 degree range. So we know curves have to be relatively significant to be seen visually without x-ray. If there's any family history of scoliosis in your family, that's another indication why you wanna be more proactive on testing and looking. So best way to find out if there's a scoliosis occurring is if you see any type of postural deviation, and I mean any shoulder imbalance, waist imbalance, hip imbalance, you take a film and make sure that there's nothing else going on and there's, it's really only a postural deviation and not truly scoliosis, especially if there's family history. So closing thoughts here, early de detection is definitely beneficial, but it's really, especially in conservative treatment, because we know proactive treatment, when it's applied early, can make a significant impact on the outcome of that patient. Meaning we see uh, many juvenile and young adolescent cases that we find them small, and we can reduce these curves tremendously with, or with our corrective approaches to actually alter the complete progression of scoliosis. Curves that are less than 25 degrees, there is some argument to how many of these cases progress to surgical levels. And you know, it can be anywhere from 25 to 33, but we see roughly about a third. Like it means, it may, it means if we diagnose 10 cases that are 25 degrees or less, three to four of those cases will become severe by the time they're done growing. Once you break 25 degrees, whatever that number is, it doubles. So it's being a third, it can be up to 60 to 65% of these cases now become surgical by the time growing. So keeping a curve below 25 degrees is by far the most important thing. But the only way you can keep a curve below 25 degrees is to catch it below 25 degrees. Unfortunately, most of my patients that I treat are curves that have progressed beyond that ma manner because most patients go to their orthopedic doctor and at 25 degrees, they're told to do nothing, just watch and see what happens. My recommendation, if you know you have scoliosis, treat it while it's small, because if you treat it while it's small, you're more likely to keep it small. Now, the great news is that we can take moderate curves and, move, and, and bring them under 25 degrees, but normally I would much rather see the smaller the curve, the better, the younger patient, the better. So being proactive, as close to your time of diagnosis and being proactive if there's a family history of scoliosis, looking at all postural findings and taking x-rays to determine if there actually is scoliosis is by far the best advice I can give for any family that has scoliosis and is associated in their family history. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.